Welcome back to NatChat. Now, Richard, you mentioned earlier that you'd spent um, over a period of four years in Lithuania, um, originally as a guest star, and then you decided you'd start doing some work on the other side of the camera. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, w that kind of happened just as a result, as you mentioned, about coming as a guest star. Mm -hmm. I got asked to do second unit directing. I immediately thought, man, that's not something I'm really ready to do or mm -hmm. passionate enough to do. As you know, I ended up doing it and it was one of the most rewarding things I did uh, in that the creative process is so different behind the camera. You're there, you're trying to edit scenes together as you shoot them, you're getting performances out of actors, you're looking at choreography you've put mm. together, you know, and to see the end result of that each week because of, mm. you know, the nature of a series, I couldn't believe how rewarding that was, you know. Mm. And thank goodness in that, you know, w in the movie business, as actors, you're a product. And age is, is, is a deciding factor on the sort of roles you get off and how consistently you get offered those roles. The older you get, you know, the less work there is as an actor, you know, unless it's a character role. So that work in Lithuania and, and other movies working as a stunt coordinator, fight coordinator, is, has given me longevity in the mm. industry. And that's my advice to anyone in this industry, is, is to be aware of the lessons that can be learned in the environment you're in. Don't mm. just sort of be one dimensional, think there's only one aspect that you can excel in. Mm. There are other areas in the film business that's absolutely worked for me. And, and it, as you know, I was fight coordinator on The Condemned, the movie mm. we shot in Queensland. I'm starting to do some pre-production work on the next Mad Max movie, which is really exciting. And to be honest with you, I don't care what it is I do, if it's mm. a stunt acting role, if it's fight coordinating, if it's training actors, I'm actually just excited to still be a part of the industry. No, you're right, because we talk about, you know, what makes you wake up in the morning being stimulated, and, and I know we both agree on this. It's sort of like it isn't even always the work or the job. It's the people you meet, what you experience together. And, um, but the thing that we didn't talk much about is visualisation, and then I want to talk to you about, you know, the book that uh, you're in the process of writing, because mm -hmm. I know you've um, diversified so much, and... So, yeah, well, visualization is something I started 35 years ago. Mm. That was through an Australian guy called Tony Rafferty. I won't go into great depth about that, but through that, I ended up going to a hypnotherapist and learning about positive imagery, I used to call it. In other words, you know, if you've got an upcoming role you want or an event you want, or I'm doing a demonstration at a tournament to visualize that event in every possible detail in the safety of your own mind. It involves mm. getting to what we call an alpha state of mind. Mm. And, and the, the most important aspect of visualization is that when you visualize in detail in every reality possible, in colors, in noises and sounds, that's impressed on your subconscious. And your subconscious cannot tell the difference between reality and imagination. Mm. So it becomes real for you depending on how real you, you, know, you use that imagery. Mm. And I've used that, as I said, in so many aspects of my life. Mm. And it's not unlike when people daydream. The difference with daydreaming is their random thoughts that come into people's heads. With visualization of positive imagery, you're creating that image that you mm. want and thereby setting your mm. whole psyche and, and forces and everything to bring about that end result in your life. It's been mm. a very powerful tool. And I'm sure with all the people you've worked with, I'm sure, you know, the great musicians and actors and people, I'm sure, and, and athletes, you know, I'm sure this is a common thread that runs through, you know, everyone, you know, that really su succeeds in their craft. Oh, look, look at look at the Tiger Woods or something. It's all mm. about visualising that, that ball going in the hole, the scorey mm. ones, basketball players, you know, mm. and artists particularly, you know, you, mm. you, like people like Shakira and that. You see interviews about them standing on a beach and just visualizing stardom. That's mm. all they wanted. And as they say, depending on the intensity of your thoughts, mm. you know, it, my example is a light bulb. A light bulb doesn't mm. just happen. Mm. 
Mm. It starts as an idea in somebody's head and depending mm. on how intensely that person or that inventor thinks about it, mm. that thought becomes reality. Mm. So thoughts are things. Mm. So I used to say if, a, if an inventor can come up with say the rotary engine through the intensity of wanting to create, mm. you can be your own invention. Why not visualize your life the way you want it to be set about those universal forces and become the result of your own imagination. And, and there's, there's all sorts of uh, proof out there in p different people's lives that have had incredible success that shows there's absolute uh, a reality to that, that way of thinking mm. and that belief system. And um, as I said, you're in, in the process of writing a book. Um, what is the topic of the book or what is that about mainly? Yeah, the book, well, you know, through, through all those years on the road and being around movie people and everything else, I've had a lot of people say, you need to write a book. Immediately I knew, well, especially with rock and roll, they want the dirt. They want all the smut that goes on, whether it's the drugs, the sex, the rock and roll. And I, I always felt I was in such a position of confidence that I would never ever write a kiss and tell book, you know. So what I thought about was, wow, maybe there's a book that I can write that would talk about the things I have learnt from people at the absolute top of their game. Mm -hmm. Like a Mick Jagger doesn't remain at the top of the rock and roll industry as long as he has without being a very, very smart individual. Mm -hmm. Linda Ronstadt, James Taylor, still 40 years later making hit mm -hmm. records. So there are a lot of things in the presence of these people that I learnt, you know, mm -hmm. often after the fact, things they would say, the way they would focus, their passion for their instruments, their songwriting, mm -hmm. for learning to hit a new note, in the case of Linda Ronstadt. So, so the book is about that. It's about all the up thing, side of things I've learned from these people. Hence the name of the book, as I said to you, a lot of it came no, after the yeah, fact. let's keep the name of the book quiet for now. Oh, okay. Oh. No, let's not. It's called <laughs> In the Moment with Hindsight. Mm -hmm. Because part of the lesson for me was that there are so many lessons that are available to us in the moment should we be open to them. There's the old proverb of emptying your cup to taste somebody else's tea. Mm. We're so clouded and we're so into our own thoughts of what we're going to say next rather than what is this person talking? What are they talking about? What, what can I possibly learn mm. without this pre-filtering we call it and mm. being open to the information presented? And, and that's why I said a lot of the lessons I learned were years after the fact Mm. Hence the name of the book being Into the Moment with Hindsight because I thought if, if through this I could help people understand that so many times there are lessons right then and there that could be the betterment of their mm -hmm. own lives should they mm -hmm. be open to receiving those lessons, mm. how good would that be? And that's, that's really what the book is about. And mm. there's some wonderful stories again with, with these artists about their passion, as I said, about things they did, things they said that led them to be and become almost the best in their fields. Mm. I mean, and that's what I want from the book. I want people, I didn't want to write a book about Richard Norton on the road. I wanted it to be that each chapter had a lesson in it that somebody could relate to their own lives and hopefully enrich their own lives in some way, shape or form. Not only from my successes, but also from the mistakes I've made, you know, and the lessons that they can glean from that. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely fantastic. And I know when, you know, we can share inspiration, it's wonderful, and you having first-hand experience and plus the wonderful people you've um, worked with, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a great book. So, um, Richard, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you. Maybe we'll have you on again. Absolutely. And um, hope you enjoyed the show. This is Judy Green and you've been watching Nat Chat. If you'd like to see the show back, please check our website out and you can watch this show or any other of our shows and I look forward to seeing you again soon.